full committee, Mr. Fazio. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, appreciate the opportunity. Thank the Corps for being here. Uh, actually, I, you know, I'm a fan of the Corps, but I, I think you're going to hear some uh, concern and frustration from a number of us up, uh, up here today uh, in the execution of the last Water Resources Development Act. First, let's, let's put down a marker. Uh, last time I checked, and someone on the panel can probably correct me, the Corps had more than a $40 billion, B, billion dollar backlog of critical infrastructure uh, that needed repair or replacement. Uh, that's not acceptable. Uh, and uh, in uh, the last word of bill at the end of the year, the uh, industry itself, uh, the inland waterway users, wanted an increase in the diesel tax, and it was done in that year-end deal. Uh, to begin to help defray some of the uh, costs of the uh, dysfunctional locks and levees and all the other problems that we have. So there is uh, there's blame to go around here uh, with the Congress. Uh, secondly, uh, when we talk about this section uh, of the bill that the uh, chairman was just talking about, uh, this was an attempt uh, to restore what I always thought was a good principle, which is uh, those who are elected from local areas better understand the needs uh, of their constituents and their infrastructure than the main offices of the federal bureaucracy in Washington, D.C. So we used to have earmarks. Now, earmarks uh, got a bad name, won't go into that for various reasons, and they were banned. Well, that was stupid. Uh, so now we have a totally opaque process where spending priorities are determined somewhere in the administration. Uh, mostly by trolls over at OMB who are accountable to no one and who do things that are invisible to everybody until they pop up. Uh, so uh, that was dumb. And we tried to get around that uh, by uh, requiring the Corps to evaluate uh, you know, locally submitted uh, projects. And the Corps, uh, perhaps at the behest of OMB, uh, followed a Reagan-era executive order and refused to follow the statutory requirements uh, put on them by Congress and gave us back an anemic little list and excluded everything else and said they had substituted under the Reagan executive order uh, their own priorities uh, and that they had authority to ignore us because we didn't say they couldn't use other criteria. Well, obviously, we will correct that in the next bill. We will say these are the only criteria you may use, period. End of story. Statute. Law. Signed by the President. You have to follow it, no matter what some jerk down at OMB says. Now, uh, that's, but we've got a couple years till we get there, or a year and a half, and I would hope that we can uh, be more productive uh, during that time period in revisiting this issue, uh, you know, this year. Uh, and that we can get uh, freed from these. Uh, it, it's really clear what the intent of Congress was. And, and if someone in the administration wants to stonewall us, uh, you know, that would be very unfortunate. Uh, you know, I would hope that this year we get more compliance uh, with that statute. Uh, and I also hope that, uh, you know, we uh, begin to recognize that the Corps is underfunded. These are critical infrastructure needs. There's a difference between investment and just plain old spending, and we need to be investing more in bringing it up to a state of good repair. With that, I yield back the balance of my time. Thank you. Thank